All right, guys, a little treat for you guys today. This is a little bit different than the videos we've been making. This is a Boss Audio Amplifier, and it's a pretty common one. A lot of people like it. It's the uh, R1100M. You know, I've seen uh, quite a guys, quite a bit of guys uh, buying these on the internet. Pretty hot item, so I figured I would see why. You know, see if it's popular, or whatever. Um, and we'll just kind of run through it. It's all, all aluminum on the outside on the heatsink. Pretty nice. But, I mean, I don't know, it just feels, feels light. So, we're going to check it out anyways. Let's see what it says right here. It's a monoblock R1100M, just standard. This is a 2-ohm stable monoblock, not a 1-ohm stable monoblock. So, we're going to test it at 4 ohms and 2 ohms. But first, we'll look at some of the outside stuff. It has these uh, little screw styles, like the old style, back in the day. These little screws that hold the power wire on. And the speaker wires, instead of like the new style terminals, it only has one 30 amp fuse. So that tells me that 1100 is probably a little bogus. We'll find out. On the input side, we have uh, a phase adjustment, pretty cool, and a low pass frequency, which we need. And this right here, low pass or full range, that's pretty interesting. So this actually, a, a full range amp, which tells me it's probably a class AB and not a um, class D. It even says MOSFET monoblock but doesn't say class D anywhere on this. Uh, so it's probably going to get hot too. Then you have your gain adjustment here and then you have uh, input sensitivity for your high and low inputs. Uh, and it has a remote base knob which uses the um, phone style jack. So pretty common. And these, they don't pop out or anything. There's a reason why people like these. And that's because they they don't come loose. They don't wiggle around. So we have this uh, super cheap base knob. It's all plastic. Uh, which is, I mean, you know, a lot of them are plastic. Four screw holes through the top. Super, super weird. Um, then of course it has a plug. Nothing else really about it. It's kind of big for how cheap it is. Crazy little knob. It's it just, I don't know. It's kind of cheap. Whatever. You get what you pay for. So a lot of amps don't have this, but this is a high-level input connector. So this is made for uh, you connecting to your speaker wires uh, directly. And, of course, you put a little ground on it to eliminate some of that noise. Um, it's kind of a noisy way to hook your amp up. Uh, but it's kind of no different than having a line level. It's like having a line level built into it. It shows you the uh, left and right and of course the ground in the middle. That goes to the chassis ground, like, you know, over here. Uh, so let's check out this manual. Uh, it has the two channel amplifiers, the four channel and the monoblock. I bet they're all class AB. We can check that out when we open it up. There's a couple neat things in here. It's pretty useful. Some wiring diagrams. Um, here's some troubleshooting guide, not too bad. Uh, and then of course they have over here the power numbers. We're going to look at those real quick. So here's the 4 channel and uh, mono, which I find it really odd that they put all these together. I'm really betting this is a uh, class AB um, mono block. And we can see right here the 1100, 1600, and 2000. And it shows max power at 2 ohms to be uh, 1100 watts. And then it shows uh, nothing bridge because it's not a bridge. Uh, it says uh, 2 ohms minimum impedance. And the rest is kind of just a bit wonky. A lot of missing information here. Um, even the two channel seems like there's just kind of some max power numbers. There's nothing really showing the actual power it's supposed to make. So we're going to test that. We don't really like this whole max power thing. Um, you know, we'll check it out. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and get this wired up to the resistor bank over here. So I've actually redone my uh, power leads here specifically for this style connection. 
on the amplifier because I want to try to give this a pretty good chance and I'm not just going to be shoving wires in the hole so if I was going to install this in a car properly uh, you would use a connector similar to this right here you can see it's got your fork connector but it's connected to uh, this is a four gauge wire so should be no problems Connect our so now we're going to pull out the meters the AMM1 and the DD1 and we're going to run the speaker wire through the AMM1 that's how it picks up the current like that and then we will connect that one and this one to the amplifier let's hook up our RCAs on this side mm-hmm we are currently set at 2 ohms on the resistor bank. Well, what do you say we turn it on and see what it does? Look at that. Very nice blue LED. You can't go wrong with pretty blue LEDs. And uh, we have a green power light over here. So we're ready to go. Let's see if we can run a test. So this is a full range amp for whatever reason. Probably because it's a class AB. We'll get into that in a little bit later. Um, but we're gonna most people are gonna put run this on subwoofers. It's a two ohm load, so you could run a, a dual four ohm or two single four ohm coils, uh, or a couple sets of dual two ohms. Should be just fine. But we're gonna run this at 40 hertz because we're gonna presume that you're gonna hook this up in your car to run subwoofers with. Okay, so we're going to run our very first test up to distortion. This is your certified test. And we're going to run this at 40 hertz. So our very first test, we're going to see uh, up to distortion and how many watts. Okay, so we have 40 hertz detect. We're going to start the test. And up to distortion right there. Wow, look at that. 185 watts. Let's try that one again. Oof, <laughs> 185 watts. I bet this thing probably isn't going to make much more than 185 watts. Okay, so at your your clean power run, we're looking at 185 watts. Dang. Okay, so we'll take a note of that. Okay, now we're going to run the second test. This will be up to clipping here. Same 40 hertz. And we're going to see this is also at 2 ohms. And uh, see what kind of power it'll make. This is the most power the amplifier is going to make. It's all I'm concerned about. At clipping, there's no more. So we'll try that. 40 hertz detect. Distortion and clipping. 189 watts at 2 ohms. We'll try that one more time. Woo! 185 watts at 4 ohms. At 14.4 volts. Our power supply didn't move at all. This thing is pulling so little power. And it's making so little power. So, uh, you know, it is what it is. We're going to try 4 ohms now. See if that makes any difference. Actually, I'm going to do something a little different because this is a full range amp. I will put this into full range mode and we will run a one kilohertz tone. All right, we're going to run the same exact test at 1000 hertz, one kilohertz. So we should see this one here light up. It's your one kilohertz. Okay, one kilohertz. Up to distortion. Ooh, look at that, 184 watts. Pretty much the same power. Let's run it up to clipping. 1K at clipping, 181 watts. Man, this thing is not happy, like, at all. It's just not gonna make more than about 180 watts at two ohms. So we'll switch that back to low and we'll do a four ohm test. All right, so I have this hooked up for a four ohm load now. We're gonna run 40 hertz. And I don't think we're going to run a 1K because it just doesn't seem like it's doing much. Uh, but we'll run a 4 ohm load at 40 hertz 
and we're going to start here to distortion 40 hertz detect and run it up to distortion 114 watts we'll try that again run it to distortion 114 watts okay one more time just just for giggles all right 114 watts this thing makes 114 watts at 4 ohms not a bad idea all right we're going to go up to clipping so if you ever wanted, ever wondered how accurate this setup is you can see it's pretty accurate even in the past we hit very similar numbers all right we're going to run this next test up to clipping at 4 ohms let's try it out we have signal 40 hertz detect and distortion and clipping oh no 114 watts I'm pretty sure it's just going to make the same power. We'll try it again. Up to clipping. There you go. 114 watts. That's the power this amplifier makes. Literally the same power. I mean, it's right there. The distortion and the clipping, they're right on the same edge. So it'll probably be super clean, up to 114 watts, and up to 185 watts, respectively. So. So people are pretty interested in seeing the uh, the guts inside of this stuff. Um, so I guess we're just going to go ahead and do that. We're going to take this cover off and show you the guts inside of this amplifier. Now mind you, it didn't make a lot of power. You know, 185 watts or whatever. So not expecting anything crazy. Honestly, I expected a little bit more, like 200. Uh, but I mean, the power numbers, they don't lie. If you don't think those uh, meters are accurate, I can go ahead. I can, I can go ahead and tell you. You know, you can message the more engineering and ask them about the accuracy of their products. Uh, and Steve Mead has even done videos hooking hundreds of these things um, up to a line, and they all come on at the exact same time. They're very fine-tuned products. So if you don't think they're accurate, I mean, you can take it up with them. Here we are, are you ready? There we are, oh man, just like I thought. So, something to note in here. This is the power supply, very small power supply. Here's your, uh, your input filter caps, power supply, rail caps. This is your output section right here. These are these little tower resistors here. They're ceramic wound resistors. And what they're designed to do is pull down the output side when they're not in use. That's a class AB trait. 100% this is a class AB amplifier. So, probably why it doesn't make a whole lot of power. Uh, it does have a TL494CN uh, chip driver IC for the power supply. So it's a pretty standard driver chip. It's just a basic class AB layout. In fact, It's almost identical layout to this amplifier here, which boasts 1100 watts, but it is a two-channel amplifier. And people know that these aren't very good either. So, there it is. That's your amplifier. 1100 watts? Yeah, I don't think so. I, I would have bet it would have done a quarter of that, but it did not. Alas, it did not even do a quarter of its rated power in the manual so it feels kind of cheap the aluminum it's not very dense it's not very thick so i mean overall it's just super light you know compared to some other amps um, i just find it really odd that you can buy things like this especially when there's a little bit better option i'll give you an example so here's just a, a comparison i've done a test on this one here the 400.1 uh, that CT makes. We'll just break this out real quick because I just want to show you what the difference is when it comes to quality because CT is not an expensive brand. These amplifiers are considered uh, on the cheap side but I want to show you this. This amplifier is literally half the size. It's half the size. You can see right there. It's half the size, exactly half the size. 
Okay, this little bitty 400.1. This is rated 400 watts. Okay, this amp makes over 500 watts at one ohm. It's one ohm stable. It's also very heavy. You compare these two. This little guy is heavier than this guy. It's so big, and it makes so little power compared to something that's so small, makes proper power, and isn't that much more expensive. So, my question is, why is this such a hot selling item? Why do so many people want this amplifier? It's an old class AB style that makes little to no power. And you have something new that's smaller. This is technology for you. It's smaller, it's heavier, it's higher quality, and it's not much more expensive. So just for a laugh, I'm gonna void the warranty on this one and pop this cover off. And we'll see what the difference is in the makeup on this kind of stuff. Because I see it all the time where people are just looking at the numbers. The numbers on the amp or on the package or on the website. And the numbers really don't add up. They just don't. So let's look at this. Oh no. Oh, this is terrible. This tiny little amp. First off, it's class D. So if you buy any monoblock, I think it should be a class D. That's just such an old design. Okay, so we have this massive coil, massive output inductor, and we have some pretty decent sized filtering caps, even more so than this one here. The caps are larger. Let's check out the rail voltage, because that's what's gonna determine your power. These caps are rated for 35 volts on the rail. Now mind you, they don't have to the rail doesn't have to be 35 volts, that's just the maximum. Let's see what these rails are. 50 volt. 50 volt caps on the rail. So this can only have a maximum of 35 volts on the rail versus this one being 50. So they're just so much more compacted into these small packages these days. And these aren't the only, you know, this brand isn't the only amp that does that. What I'm saying is these brands like this and there's quite a few of them, you're just not getting a good product for the money. There's almost no reason to buy something like this. So, and you know, they get a bad name anyways, but here it is, side by side, two completely different things, you know, not even different in price, but that's what you're getting for. A class AB monoblock. There's nowhere near the rated power and, uh, I mean, honestly, I don't know if I would put that in a beater car. It, it literally makes no power. It's not enough to run hardly anything. So, I don't know. I, I can't recommend anything like this at all. So, you know, maybe I'll give it away. I've got some other stuff coming up. Um, I might give this away with something else. Be tuned for that. I'm going to go ahead and put this back together. I hate it to go to waste, but I'm not going to use it, so we'll see if somebody else can use it. But that's it for me, so stay clean. Try not to clip your stuff too bad. These guys are a clipping machine, so, you know, it's also not enough power to really destroy anything. Friends don't let friends buy Boss products. It's pretty simple. Um, just shop around, anything else, uh, especially if you see things that have power numbers on them. It's, it's hard to deny the power when they provide the proof. So, have a good year. See you next time. Stay clean.